Hi, my name is Jacqueline Christie and I have a son who goes to this school. He is in Secondary 2 Express and uh, I am a member of the Parent Support Group, a group that, I, that is increasingly active in this school and there are a number of very committed parents here who wish to help the teachers in their kids' ed academic journey. So question, why did you choose AES for your child? Or why did your child choose AES? Well, to be frank, William uh, had, it, had his heart set on uh, ACS and uh, even St. Joseph. But uh, he couldn't get in. And so I suggested uh, Assumption, uh, Assumption School here which was literally around the corner. We live in Cashew Park Condo. But when I got here, I was actually very pleasantly surprised. First, I actually like the openness of the architecture. And I think the architecture reflects the ethos of the school. And that is a school that is, although small, but was actually very cozy and you get the opportunity to to get to know the teachers you know very well in fact and uh, i have been most heartened by the support that uh, my son has been getting from all his teachers so i'm actually very happy that he is at aes what are some of the positive changes you have seen in your child since he joined aes well apart from height and more hair in his face um, I found that he's become, um, let's say, when he was in primary school, he was a bit of a loner and he was always in his shell, you know, but ever since he got here, he has become uh, more confident, certainly more outspoken. And I think uh, that is due in, a, in part by the encouragement and uh, and the influences of the teachers at the school. They have managed to bring out from Liam um, his, his, his confidence and, uh, and uh, how should I say, uh, the, the, ex the ability to express himself. And I think uh, many teachers will vouch for the fact that Liam does speak his mind and is quite uh, articulate as well. So I, I think I owe, that in, I owe that to his teachers, his English teachers. And because the school is small, he has the opportunity to take part in uh, debate and uh, in fact, drama as well. So I think that, that has helped him an awful lot. How, what, how's the difference between uh, AES and Right. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Something that I forgot to mention as well. And Liam has many siblings in other schools. And I've noticed that at AES, it is different. You know, there is, uh, I, f I feel as though I am more in touch with my child's personal and academic journey because parents and the, and the teachers, we work closely together to help uh, help William. I mean, I, I bet you, I don't think any other school, in, in any other school, had he gone to any other school, I would have the phone number of all his teachers and that uh, if he needed help or if there was something wrong, the teachers would not hesitate to contact me, send me a message and let me know what was going on or vice versa. I could actually have a conversation with the teachers and how we can both help um, William. So that I think that is something very special. And I don't think it exists in any other school. I, I mean, Liam has siblings, sisters in other schools. And I don't get that feeling from those schools. So, so yeah. Thank you. So what do you enjoy about your secondary school life in AES so far?
I really enjoyed how the teachers and seniors really helped me ease into the school environment. Like for my very first day, because I was really nervous because of course I was P6 just going into Sec 1. And uh, with the help of them, they really helped me into my classroom and to my classmates as well. And also with the programs and events like Youth Day and Teachers Day, also with the Sec 1 orientation and camp. Um, also with my CCA, I was also given the opportunity to compete in competitions. So yeah. Yeah, is there any moment throughout your time here in AES where you felt a strong sense of pride being in something like one of the memory or event that made me have a strong sense of pride being an assumptionite is during sports day. Seeing everyone unite and having fun gives me a strong sense of unity and connection to the school. And that made me feel very proud to be an assumptionite. I felt a strong sense of pride during the National Day Parade in school. It was how the assumptionites came and sang the songs together with so much enthusiasm. I could feel the abundance of energy bursting in all directions. Everyone was happy and enjoyed themselves. Hope to see all of you here at Hope AES. to see Bye. you at AES soon. Bye. shortly. Before we begin, here's a schedule for today's session and a Google Form link for you to enter any questions you may have for us. We'll try to address them during the live segments later on. Very good afternoon to one and all. We at Assumption English School are very are glad that you are able to join us online today. If you have just joined us, do note that there will be a QR code and a link for you to raise your questions through a Google form. Alternatively, you may click on the form link pasted in the YouTube description below. I shall now pass the time to our school principal, Mr. Benjamin Kwok, who will share a bit more with you about our school. Mr. Kwok, please. All right, thank you, Chee Hoon. Uh, good afternoon, parents and students. Uh, indeed, uh, very unusual uh, circumstances. Actually, I'm not in school right now. I'm in another school uh, in the midst of uh, a cluster meeting, actually. So I had to quickly come out of that meeting to, to uh, speak to all of you and I really thank all of you for being around this afternoon uh, to give us this chance to really talk about Assumption English School. Now together with me this afternoon actually I have uh, a group of people which I would like to thank uh, my key personnel uh, Rain, uh, Seok King, Che Hoon and Gary my key personnel who's around to lend support uh, you might hear from them later on as well. If let's say during the Q and A, if there's any question they could help to answer, uh, uh, they will support. And also, I have a, a parent, uh, Vivian, who's here as well, as well as uh, alumni and students, uh, Louis Tio, as well as Cassius. Now, together with me later on with my VP, Miss Wong. Uh, so we are here this afternoon, afternoon to really talk about the school. All right. So uh, next slide. 
So uh, indeed, uh, Assumption English is the only co-ed Catholic school in the West uh, offering the O-levels as well as N-levels curriculum. So we are the only co-ed Catholic school in the West. Uh. So for parents, you may be wondering, uh, what's the difference you know, between uh, a mission school not just a Catholic mission school, but any Christian or, 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 uh, or maybe even uh, uh, a Buddhist school and so forth. You know? What's the difference between a mission school as well uh, as compared to a typical government school? Now, all schools are good, all right? Uh, but coming from, because I was a principal of a typical government school before, so my time right now, this is my fourth year in Assumption English, I, I can see that indeed there's a difference. Uh, I think for us being a mission school, because we are faith-based, in this case a Catholic school, uh, the teaching of character and values indeed comes very naturally. In fact, part of our school routine uh, uh, has got this uh, faith-based kind of uh, routine uh, and, and really indeed to inculcate that sense of good character and values uh, in our students uh, uh, because of the faith. It comes very naturally. It does, it's not about evangelizing. We, we don't do that. Uh, but indeed, uh, all religion teaches us to be good. And therefore, the values and character values and, and education of it all uh, comes very naturally. And indeed, they are universal. All right. And, and because of this, there's also this common space uh, where we can really uh, appreciate our own faith as well. Such as, for example, in the morning when we have our morning prayer, and of course, it is in the Catholic form. Uh, I will always tell my students and teachers who are non-Catholics, it is really an opportunity for you to be showing gratefulness and honour to your own faith as well. And I think this is so important. In the morning, when we start off the day with a prayer, it gives us that sense of peace and calmness also. So really, teaching a, uh, of uh, characters, good character and values uh, comes very naturally. And uh, it's really about serving others rather than focus about self. And if we focus others about others, uh, that sense of uh, self-importance uh, is much lesser. And actually for our own personal well-being, it gets better as well. And this is so important for our students. Now, of course, the next question is, uh, is Assumption English School only meant for Catholics? Uh, definitely no. Uh, we are inclusive. Although it's a Catholic school, we are inclusive. We respect everyone. We, we care for everyone. Uh, in fact, you know, just now when I thought about the, the people who are involved in this presentation this afternoon, uh, my staff, uh, if you look at all of them, uh, who, who are the Catholic uh, teachers and staff? Actually, I'm the only one. Actually, the rest of them are non-Catholics, but we all work uh, together in harmony for one purpose, which is for our students, all right? So I just want to assure uh, uh, the parents as well, huh? uh, we are inclusive in that sense. In fact, we have many families whose children have been, been through Assumption English School and they belong to other faith, and they say proudly that all their children, they have went through Assumption English School. So they could be Hindus, they could be Buddhists, they could be Muslims as well, all right? Uh, so we are indeed inclusive. Next slide. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about the school identity. Uh, so we are indeed uh, uh, located in this big community, which we call it the Boys Town community. Uh, it's a large ground, very large ground that houses three institutions. So sometimes people get a bit confused. Huh? Uh, the part of the compound that is closest to Upper Bukit Timah Road, and it's only a five minutes walk from Cashew MRT. Uh, that's our Assumption English School. And for us, yes, we are a mission school, but we we cater, all right, uh, through the a typical MOE curriculum, offering the O levels as well as N levels curriculum. All right, so we are no different from any other secondary school. We offer the MOE curriculum, O levels as well as N levels. All right, so that's Assumption English School. Now, another school which is in this same compound as well, which people get confused uh, 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 many a times, is actually Assumption Pathway School. So they are nearer to Cashew uh, Road, all right, Cashew Road, and uh, they function as a school. They are, in fact, a specialized independent school, and their curriculum is more vocational based, more hands on and applied based as well. All right, and the students there, they are found to be more suited 
all right, to, to learn more about vocational skills as well as applied life skills. All right. Uh, so there is a Sanfran Parvi. They have their own principles, their own set of style, and they are at a different location as well. Now, within the community, right at the top, all right, is of course the Boys Town Boarding Home. Uh, and indeed, uh, they are a residential home that help looks after boys who come from uh, pitiful, challenging home backgrounds, uh, normally orphans. So uh, back in the past, uh, post uh, World War II, uh, of course, they had more boys because um, there were many broken families. All right. But nowadays, things are better. Uh, the number of boys going there is lesser, but there's still uh, boys who need the care and the concern as well. And each year, we do take in about two to three uh, residents from Boys Town to give them a chance of having a better future. All right. And that adds to the diversity in our, in our student landscape. All right. Next slide. So what is the government aided school like? Like what I mentioned before, uh, basically it is faith based. It's, it started because of a particular region, uh, religion or faith. All right. So for us, it started because of the Montfort brothers of Saint Gabriel. They came from France actually. All right. And then when they came over to Southeast Asia, in particular Singapore, all right, they started schools. So later on, I'll mention which are the schools under the Montfort brothers of Saint Gabriel's. And for all of us uh, in that particular cluster of schools, we actually share the same uh, school crest as well. Okay. Next slide. So uh, uh, a very important uh, school that is affiliated to us is Catholic Junior College for those parents and students who are thinking about uh, doing your A-levels in a junior college. So CJC is affiliated to us. And if you were to uh, make it to a junior college, meet the cutoff points and so forth, uh, and you put CJC as your first choice junior college, you will enjoy two bonus points. Uh, that's quite a good advantage. Mm -hmm. Just to let you know. Next slide. So the affiliated schools uh, uh, for us will be, of course, CJC, uh, St. Gabriel's Primary, St. Gabriel's Secondary, Montford Junior, Montford Secondary, and of course, our neighbor Assumption Pathway School. So these are the network of schools that are affiliated to us. Now, early on uh, this morning when we had a presentation to, uh, we, had another, another, we had a separate live session this morning, uh, there were some questions, you know, about uh, St. Gabriel's Primary as well as Montford Junior. Because they are affiliated, does it mean they will uh, enjoy uh, the affiliation uh, when they apply to come to Assumption English School? Now, this affiliation is just affiliation because we were founded by the Montford Brothers of St. Gabriel's. But in terms of primary school to secondary school, are they if affiliated in that sense? No. So they will not enjoy... Uh, any form of priority, all right, in terms of application to SEC 1. So for St. Gabriel's Primary as well as Montford Junior, uh, there is no such affiliation, all right. But anyway, the six schools, uh, local schools, uh, there are collaboration, all right. Uh, so like, for example, recently we, we had our talent show involving the three secondary schools, all right. And then we also had uh, lessons as well, pure science lessons that was opened up uh, uh, to the secondary schools, all right, uh, during our extended curriculum. And then there were also uh, virtual escape games, all right, games where uh, students go online to apply what they've learned, all right, for English, mathematics, and science, all right, and at the same time, learn a little bit more about the history about Boys Town, as well as the stories of our founding saint, St. Louis Marie de Montfort. Now, one particular uh, cluster of schools that are overseas based uh, are these colleges. We call it the Assumption Colleges, uh, basically based in Thailand. In particular, Bangkok, Chiang Mai, and Lampang. Uh, Pre-COVID times, uh, they would visit us uh, quite regularly, and we will also visit them as well. Uh, but because of the COVID situation, we are unable to do so. Uh, but however, uh, the links are still there. We can do. Uh, we can still connect with them virtually. Uh, just to let, let everyone know that the Assumption College in Chiang Mai is quite well known. Uh, in fact, a lot of the politicians in Thailand, uh, they, they came through Assumption College in Chiang Mai itself, apparently. Uh, however, when they leave the college, uh, they move on to either the government side or the opposition side. All right? So I always uh, chuckle to myself and laugh, you know. While in school, they are all united. After they leave school, well, they become enemies. Quite funny. All right. Okay, next slide. 
So we are committed to developing men and women of character and learning. All right. So indeed, uh, this is what we do. Very important for us. And I've said earlier on, uh, um, the learning of character and good values come very naturally to us. Very natural to us. Uh. In fact, later on, I'll, I'll mention a quote by our founding saint to illustrate why is that so. And of course, learning. Uh, uh, our academic studies, our academic programs are very important to us as well. So it is a balanced, holistic program. Okay, next. So what are our student outcomes? All right, our student outcomes, we want to produce in our students a sense of fortitude, a sense of mastery, a sense of charity. All right, a sense of fortitude, mastery and charity. Now, this photo that you see in this particular slide, uh, it shows our three students, two boys and a girls. In fact, they are from our debating team, uh, pre-COVID uh, times, you know. And why we show this particular picture of three of them, uh, there's a story behind it because they were in our debating team. They went for competition. So there was this particular competition and while waiting for the opposite opposition uh, uh, team, another school, uh, waiting for the speaker to speak up, uh, unfortunately, the the speaker from the other school uh, had stage fright, had stage fright, and couldn't speak. So these three students of ours, uh, they didn't jeer or anything like that. In fact, they nodded their head and smile and try and encourage uh, the student. And now the teacher from the other school, he was so touched by what our students did. He actually dropped me an email to tell me about our students, uh, the kind of care and and the kind of uh, empathy they have shown uh, for uh, the opposition team and told us that we should be so proud of them. So that's why we showed this particular picture of uh, these three students. Indeed, we are so proud of them. Okay, so our student outcomes of fortitude, mastery and charity. Now, let's look at fortitude. Next slide. This next slide show uh, one of our alumni. His name is Sean Tan and we are so proud of him because he showed this sense of fortitude. Who would have thought that this year itself, in July, there was this announcement that a Singaporean has finally made it uh, into the world wrestling entertainment. All right, It is a sport but also a form of entertainment and I heard uh, when he was a student, he really had dreams about being a wrestler. All right, And of course, a lot of people will laugh at him, ah, yeah, it's just a dream, you know. But really, he showed this sense of fortitude because why? In the midst of challenges and great difficulties, he showed courage and determination in wanting, what, in wanting to achieve what he set out to achieve. So that's the kind of spirit we want to see in our students. And indeed, this particular alumni, Sean Tan, has shown us the way. All right, next slide. Mastery. We want our students to be humble, to know that there's always something to learn, to improve on, uh, to show mastery as well, to strive towards mastery. All right. So this picture is, in fact, uh, our our N level students have done very well. Uh, they have shown mastery, perseverance, in wanting to do the best that they can be. Eh? Later on, I will share uh, some of our results uh, in terms of post secondary. All right. So the parents and students will have a better sense. Uh, where do our students go to when they leave us? Eh? All right. So really, a sense of mastery. So this set of results. All right. Of our O and N level students, for our four express students. Those eligible for junior college is about close to 41%. All right, those qualifying for polytechnic is about almost 86%. Very good set of results. If you look at our four express students, those who are doing pure science, pure bio, pure, pure biology, pure physics, pure chemistry. All right, the percentage percentages eligible for JC will rise up to a above 50% and almost 100% for polytechnic. So a good set of very healthy results. How about for our 5N students, 5 normal academic students? These are students who, after completing 4 normal academic, they return back to school to do their O levels. And now they achieve very good results as well. 84% eligible for polytechnic. So most of them, they, uh, most of them will strive towards a polytechnic route uh, for our 5N students. How about our 4 normal academic students? All right, 70.7% .7 of them eligible for SEC 5 also a good set of results. So for normal technical results, 100% eligible for ITE. So I just want to assure parents that in terms of our academic programs, it is very good, very sound. What has happened is that in all our streams, whether it is express, normal academic or normal technical, 
when it comes to us with the PSLE results, normally we have data to show us that at the end of secondary school, they should be able to achieve a certain level of results. So what we are able to achieve is we are able to achieve better than expected results. Better than expected results. So in other words, the students perform better than expectations. So this is something we can do for your child. Okay, so charity, uh, that sense of charity, that, that attribute that we want to see in our students, that is part of our DNA, as I mentioned, as a mission school. All right, uh, doing good, good words, good deeds. Uh, and indeed, our alumni, uh, this chap, Benedict Lim, uh, even when he was in school, he has always been helping others as well. And he has got this talent uh, to repair computers. And this is what he's been doing even right now as well. So he's been helping to repair and refresh used computers so that the computers could be donated uh, to needy families. All right, and this is so critical right, these two years because of the COVID situation, not easy for families who are facing financial difficulties. So this uh, alumni, Benedict Lim, has been doing this. And how about another uh, alumni? All right, I have Aliyah, all right, who volunteered in this Cerebral Palsy Alliance Singapore charity group, helping them to create resources, especially video resources so to support it in their learning. Uh, teaching and learning resources as well as to capture uh, events uh, all right for the association as well all right so we are so proud of them uh, that heart of charity we want to see in our students okay so i mentioned about our founding saint so many a times when we are in a typical uh, government school trying to look for a superhero to inspire our students but in a mission school like ours uh, it comes so naturally and it comes in the form of our founding saint we call him saint louis murray de montfort so he he said this those whom the world rejects must move you the most so i always remind this to my teachers and staff as well to our students in the sense that we must always be inclusive care and respect everyone especially the last the lost as well as the least so a person with a sense of others before self and this is very very important for us so if your child if if you are to come to uh, our school assumption english school these are some of the values uh, that we will teach our students next to call to the audience who just join us Thank you, Mr. Kuo. To the audience who just joined us, if you have any questions for us along the way, you may click on the question form link listed under the YouTube description or simply scan the QR code you see on the screen to assess the form on your mobile devices. Many of you ask similar questions on the CCA we offer in Assumption English School. On the screen now, you can see the CCAs we offer. For sports and games, basketball, judo and football are our DSA sports. And yes, some of you also ask, are there selection trials for CCAs? Generally, as part of orientation program, the sec ones will be able to experience the various CCAs. For sports and games in particular, the CCAs will likely invite the students to go through simple routines to assess their suitability for the sport. However, that does not mean that the students will not get into a particular CCA if he or she does not have the relevant experience. Okay, we value the students' interests and we'll take their choices into consideration. The next common set of questions asked are related to NDLP. In line with the Ministry's direction, AES has embarked on our NDLP journey and every Assumption Knight owns a personal learning device. This next, this next slide will show you the Chromebook model our students use. The device was chosen based on portability, usability and durability.
Now, before I invite our panelists onto screen for the live segment discussion, do keep your questions coming in. Simply click on the lesson, uh, the question form link listed under the YouTube description, or simply scan the QR code you see on the screen now to assess the form on your mobile devices. I have with me on the screen right now, uh, Luis Cassius. Right. Can you share with us a little bit more about your AES or your CC experience so far? Uh, maybe um, Luis might want to start first. Um, all right, I'll go ahead first. So, hey everyone, Luis here. So I graduated class of um, 2012. Um, sorry, the question was CCA or just general school experience, right? Yes. Okay. Um, I'll go for the general school part, I guess. Um, maybe I'll just select a very specific, um, I guess, segment of my AES school life. And I think play a really big part of my life and that's really memorable. Um, two parts. First, I think the environment and friends itself, I, I would say out of all the educational institutions that I went through, um, still the best. I'm fr my best friends are still from Assumption and I'm very happy with that. I'm still connected with many of the teachers, so um, very lovely. And I guess the second part is, um, I think a big part of my life in Assumption was involved in, um, what we back then what we call, I think it's the same thing, student council. Um, I think that, I, I would say that's a big highlight of my um, time in AES and it shaped, uh, not to be, you know, cliche, but it really shaped a lot um, of how I am as a person today. You know, I went on to um, CJC, and affiliated with Assumption, um, and I went on to also join one of the um, the, the student council, or rather the um, sports leader side of things, and move on to um, similar roles. So I, I guess to give you guys a really quick idea, one minute, student council, I think the great thing was we were given... I would say at a point in time, quite a lot of responsibility to organize big school events. And that, that's really valuable as a student. And you don't realize it until you leave the school that, you know, um, I think shout out to uh, Miss Chai, who was our um, student council teacher at that point in time. She really did really well in giving us the right amount of leadership responsibilities to organize school-wide events for, you know, so many people. So. Yeah, um, I'll stop here first. If you guys have any questions, let me know. But that that's kind of, I, that's a quick snapshot of my time in AES. Okay, so um, I think for me, right, I mean, I recently graduated in 2021. Right now, I'm awaiting my O-level results. I would say, uh, together with Louis as well, that actually, uh, I'm also an SC. I was part of the executive committee. And SC was really a big part of my life, including CCA, because... Um, in terms of being a part of the student council, we planned a lot of activities and for me most memorable was actually uh, planning the set one orientation. So for set one orientation, what we did was we planned games and then we even had camping for one night. Uh, this was pre-COVID. So that was all very, very memorable, being able to bond with my friends and my you know, uh, committee members. In terms of CCA, I was actually from the Debate Society, or ELDDS as we say it down here. So um, in ELDDS, it's English Language Drama and Debate Society. So we both have debate and drama. And um, once you go in, you get to try out both debate and drama and make your choice after that. For me, I actually chose debate. I felt I rest more of it and uh, as Mr. Kwok mentioned just now I would say debating has been quite an experience for me as well as it really trains me in terms of not just character but being witty and quick in terms of ac academics as well so yep AS was very memorable okay thank you thank you okay Louis I um, was the class uh, was in the class of 2012 and he was also the valedictorian in the class of 2012 and subsequently the valedictorian of CJC. So for a question to uh, Lewis, um, we we have a significant 
um, one common question is that we have a significant community of uh, bad students in Boys Town because that's what um, the general public uh, sensing of what we have in the AES. Would you like to answer that? All right, just unmute. So, can you guys hear me? Okay. Okay. Um, so, okay. So, I, I, I did mention that. Um, so, I'm also an alumni of Boys Town Home, Singapore. So, I was there for four years um, during my secondary school time, and I went on to stay there for another two years during my JC time. So, the stereotype is real. I think people do think that, uh, you know, when, when I tell people, like, you know, hey, I stay in Boys Town, they're like, what do you do? <laughs> so, but I didn't do anything, but um, not, not really that, but um, I guess to this this not this part of myth it, it really is a myth or rather that um is that or rather to give some context is i personally think that it, it people the stereotype is not justified and i think just living there giving you an idea of the experience is that um personally i just feel very fortunate um comparing my situation with other borders there. I come from a complete family, you know, I'm very, very lucky. But a lot of the people there, they are there because of the environment that they were put in or the situation that they were put in since they grew up and they have almost no choice in that. So, um, so I guess just to give you guys some idea there, but honestly, not looking, not looking backwards, but right now that all of them have, uh, all of us, you know, those who were in Boys Town, we have graduated from Boys Town, go back, so so called, um, go back to the society. I honestly don't see any difference uh, when it comes to that, you know. And I was still able to do well in my studies, and I would say in my life I'm doing pretty well. I'm ha very happy in my life um, since I moved on from Boys Town. So yeah, uh, that's that's a little bit about um, my life in Boys Town. Um, why people have that stereotype, um, and where are the where are my friends right now from Boys, Boys Town? And a lot of them are really doing cool stuff. And recently, I just heard that from one of them, they're just starting a business as well. Um, they're starting an f &B establishment. So that's really cool stuff here. Yeah. Thank you very much, Louis. Okay, maybe a question for uh, Cassius. Uh, some parents are concerned about the academic load. You mentioned quite a spread of activities you were involved in. You know, you are also taking pure sciences and additional maths. So, uh, how were you able to cope? Uh, I would say it uh, starting sec three when because the jump from sec two to sec three, um, especially is kind of a lot. I would say so. Starting of sec three, I didn't really cope as well, and my grades were dropping a bit. But I think who really helped me was actually uh the teachers and the school counselors. So particularly uh, Mr. Desmond Chen, he's actually he's uh, one of our school counselors, and he's really really helpful. So, you know, uh, during recess or sometimes after school, he'll just ask hang out in his office and we can rent to him or uh, he'll give us some free Oreos, etc. And I mean, in terms of that as well, he also helps to teach us time management skills, organization, etc. Um, and, and I would say uh, the teachers as well helped a lot, particularly my form teacher, Miss Chan, I would say, and Miss Chai, my chemistry teacher as well. She's really, they both have really helped me a lot in terms of being very... Um, encouraging first of all and also after school we have this thing called consultations so basically what the teachers do is that usually you will see especially the graduating classes uh, uh after school we will sit outside the staff room with our teachers for sort of like tuition lessons or extra lessons sort of thing so um the teachers i would say in as are very very caring and they really take their time to make sure that you know your concepts well um rather than just you know always just bombarding you with homework and assignments they really connect with you as well. I understand the problems you're going through. Thank you, Cassius. Yeah, just now Cassius uh, mentioned about uh, um, Boosters program. So um, uh, maybe I can talk a little bit about um, support given to students sitting for national exams. Uh, not just for national exams, we have a booster for sec ones, two, threes as well. And uh, yes, the, the teachers here are very, very caring. Uh, Ms. Chai is a common teacher mentioned by both Lewis and Cassius. Would you say that uh, caring teachers is um, one of the main reasons that um, sets AES apart from other schools? Uh, Lewis, would you like to take the question first? I will. Um, first of all, um, 
first of all, teachers are 100% really caring, and I have very, a lot of fond memories. Uh, this does it set this apart from other schools? I don't know. I didn't go to other schools, so that's 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 one thing uh, that I have to say. But I would say I have very fond memories. Um, I if you ask me to list out all the teachers that I've met um, from sec one to sec four, you know, we change things change so um, so much over from sec one to sec four. Um, I would say, but still, I would say looking back, I have a re. I would say that I guess that's why I always say that. Um, what I always say. Um, Teachers are really underrated. Like I, going into I, I guess going into a workforce. Um, also, I run my own company, managing people. I sometimes I look back, I'm like, wow, teachers are really a different breed of humans because they're just so. No matter what we throw at them, they're they're still so caring, you know. Um, so I would say that's 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 that that's hundred percent. I agree with that statement there and. If you are teachers that I've crossed paths with in, in AES, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Louis. I'm sure the teachers also um, had a good experience uh, teaching you. Oh, how about Cassius? Uh, I would say same for Louis as well. I mean, uh, do I know whether it sets us apart from other schools? I don't really think so. I would say all teachers are actually pretty caring. But um, in particular in AES, I would say that they've really made this place quite uh, very very memorable for me uh, especially you know with consultations or with student council all really all my teachers have really helped me a lot um in terms about friendships i've made in the school i mean uh i would say we are all very very close as of now um as time progresses i mean i really don't know but i would say that i've forged really really close friendships and a lot of my best and i mean Primary school friends don't really last that much for me. Um, but yes, in Assumption English School, I would say that all my best friends are here and I really cherish them a lot. All right, Cassius, may you, um, could you also share with us, uh, because mm. you um, just finished your Sec 4, uh, waiting for your O-level results, uh, share with us uh, what is a typical day for you uh, like and when there were still like CCAs going on for you? Uh, a typical day, I would say it, it really varies. Um, for, for us, right, some of the days we have very, very long lessons. As we progress to Site 4, of course, the pure sciences especially we end much later than the rest of the other classes. But uh, in general, I would say school ends at about maybe on CCA days, Tuesdays and Thursdays. So we end at about 2 p.m. and then we have CCA until about uh five i would say yeah it's around five so during competitions or competition season usually the ccs will pick up more so we'll have about tuesdays thursdays and fridays and for uh speaking for debate we our competitions usually are on the weekends so fridays and the weekends will be filled up for us as well but i would say it actually is pretty fulfilling um despite being a bit tired here and there i i would say i really learned a lot all right, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Louis and Cassius, do you have um, any else to anything else to add? No? Yeah. Right, thank you so much, uh, Louis and uh, Cassius, to have joined us today. Uh, let's move on to the next segment where we'll invite our parent volunteer, Ms. Vivian Poon, along with our principal, Mr. Benjamin Kwok, and our vice principal, Ms. Wong Ke Sin. Uh, onto uh, our screen. All right, so you can see we have our QR code. So let's keep the questions coming in. Uh, scan the QR code um, and you can type in your questions on your mobile devices or you can use the YouTube link uh, given in our YouTube page. Thank you so much, Louis and Cassius. You guys were great. And now we have on the screen with us our principal, Mr. Benjamin Kwok, our vice principal, Ms. Wong Ke Sin, and our parent volunteer, Ms. Vivian Poon. Good afternoon, everyone. Perhaps I'll direct the first question to Ms. Poon. Right, Ms. Poon, someone asked, are the teachers uh, in AS supportive towards the students? Would you like to take oh, the yes. question? Yeah, sure. 
uh, definitely they they support them very well as like what um just now uh, uh the one of the alumni was uh, saying uh, sorry i forgot his name uh he said that after school there'll be consultation with the with the teachers so i think that is one of the main point that you know um it really shows that the they have really caring teachers in the school yeah um Following um, Louis' uh, clarification on um, Boys Town, uh, we uh, read on social media platforms that there are some like students' disciplinary issues, right? Um, so, we'll just want um, maybe Mr. Kwok to clarify about the case of the mistaken identity with Assumption Pathway School, because someone, someone asked that question. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think it's a good question. Uh, like earlier on, what we was mentioned, right, uh, because we all uh, share the same common history and we all belong to the same, uh, we are under the brothers, uh, Bonford Brothers of St. Gabriel's, uh, and therefore the school crest is the same. So sometimes uh, there is that mistaken uh, identity. Uh, but one, I would like to say that uh, for Assumption English School, uh, the students uh, are actually very well behaved, very well behaved. Of course, sometimes we will have issues, which is the same as any other school, all right? But uh, because we are a mission school, uh, the message to our students about being caring, about having good values, good behavior, uh, resonates uh, strongly almost every day, almost every day. In fact, before we start off the day, we say our morning prayer and part of the morning prayer is really about dedicating the day uh, to our own faith, you know, uh, to justify our, exi our existence, to, 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 to do good words, uh, to say good words and good deeds as, as well. So generally, our students are behaving very well. And uh, in the event, there are some students who make wrong choices. Of course, there are consequences to be met, but beyond the consequences, it is also trying to understand the student, all right, to, to maybe put ourselves in their position, all right, and to help them uh, to change and, and show better character and values as well, all right. So this is on the part of Assumption English School. Now, for the other school, Assumption Pathway, Actually, we are very proud to be part of the community. But I would dare say, you know, just now there was an earlier question about uh, Boys Town and that uh, we, we feel that they are no good. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, not a right uh, view or perception because every child comes from a different background. Uh, they come from different perspectives as well. Uh, some of them may require additional support and help to help them make the right choice. So in any case, uh, let's say if we talk about Assumption Pathway, uh, both schools work together. Sometimes there may be mistaken identity in terms of, oh, uh, a particular student is doing something wrong. Uh, we will communicate so that ultimately uh, uh, the child will be uh, given the required attention, all right, and given the the right supervision to make the right choice. For Boys Town, I want to say that they are managed very well. All right, the counselors there, the social workers there, they work very hard to help the students, the residents over there, and there are normally no issues. In fact, right now I have a Boys Town resident in my school who is secondary two right now and is going to be moving on to Sec three. He's in the normal technical stream, but he's doing mother tongue at the express level. At the express level and that is great success in itself and also he's a wonderful footballer as well and if i think back in the past maybe two years back i have a, a boys town resident as well who was one of the top one of the top uh sec for normal academic student all right i don't want to mention his name because of privacy and uh, confidentiality but he was an award winner i think he was among the top five students of the cohort in the cohort itself so i just want to assure parents all right, indeed, uh, we belong to a large community, but
but they are all well taken care of. And I want to show you if indeed your child is at a, in Assumption English School, all right, don't have to worry, all right. Uh, we we develop them, all right, holistically. And don't worry about things like bullying and all that kind of stuff, because indeed uh, our students, they behave very well and they always make good uh, values-based decisions. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Paul. There may be a question for uh, Ms. Wong. Um, how many uh, NT classes, uh, maybe you can talk about how many NT classes and how the allied educators help our NT students uh, who have special needs? Oh, hi. Good afternoon, parents. Uh, in AES, currently every level, we only have one NT classes. The same will be projected for 2022. All right. As for the allied educators helping our students with special educational needs, Currently, we have one, all right, that looks into the learning behavior support. Um, in what way can the AD help the students in need? Um, currently, we have a process put in place. Number one is when the students enter SEC 1, uh, we would have um, some con make some contact, all right, either from the parents to our form teachers or actually from the form teachers checking in with the parents. Okay, when we have the profile of the students, then um, our AED will touch base with the parents. And for certain cases or, or certain uh, students who needed uh, further support, uh, we will engage the parents to meet our form teachers as well as AED and together with one of the school leaders at least, okay, to have a clearer idea in what way we can better support them. And so far um, in AES, um, we do have cases where we need um, additional help uh, to provide to our students. So what we did was we have actually crafted a, 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 a process or a, rather a program to support this child, uh, even to the extent like um, during her, his free time, because this child has been exempted from mother tongue. And there will be a, a place for the child to go to uh, during her, his recess or during his free time. Then on top of this, uh, in our school, we have a committee all right, of uh, teachers who are with special trained um, skills in engaging the students. So they will work very closely with the AD and we provide that support in general. Um, for certain cases where it was being surfaced along the way throughout the year, knowing them for the first time, uh, we do have teachers and AD checking in to the class all right uh regularly so uh rest assured to parents and of course uh, we will welcome you uh dropping in uh, uh, through an email or to call our form teachers should your child join aes next year thank you right uh, uh miss wong and uh additional question like um because parents uh uh, parents being parents, you know, we will want our <laughs> children to uh, progress. Uh, so any lateral transfer at the end of sec one or two, uh, what, are, what about the percentage of uh, NT students going to NA, for example? Okay, um, currently based on the trend record, we generally have at least two to five students in general on average, okay, every year, uh, lateral transfers from NT to NA. And on top of it, um, among our NT students, there are a couple of them actually took up SBB subjects. That means uh, in English, language, uh, maths, uh, mother tongue as well, all right, um, at a higher demand uh, stream. So generally, there's no quota in AES. Uh, what is important is as long as the child shows their aptitude and ability to do it, we will offer the students the opportunity. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wong. Uh, uh, right, can uh, I maybe just we can. On. Yes. Uh, just want to add on. Uh, just now the question is about lateral transfer. I just want to maybe present to the parents about a very unique program from Assumption English School that we didn't present just now. Of course, we are a full subject based spending school, and uh, students uh, with the PSLE results of uh, achievement level 5 and better for NE stream can do express level subjects. And then for NT students, they need to score an achievement level of six and better, they can do NA uh, level subjects, right? So the question is, how about students who did not achieve 
uh, these results, you know, they, they do not qualify for full subject based spending. So how? So actually in Assumption English, like what we mentioned earlier on, they are inclusive. So we also think about students like this, you know. So what happened is we have all our resources parked virtually online. All right. So for just subjects like science, humanities, and for next year, we, in, we are including English as well as mathematics as well. So for NE students who would like to try out a higher demanding subjects, they may do so by uh, going online to tap on some of these resources to be an independent learner. But the school will provide a guide so that they know how to navigate through these resources. So that is something to look forward to for NE students as well as NT students. And this one is up to the child, up to the parents. It's your choice whether to embark on this journey or not. Now for parents or students who are in the express stream, there is no full SBB. So how? Ah, we have a special program as well, but we, we, talk, we put it under SDP as well. Set two express students next year, they are able to try out all right, upper secondary science curriculum as well as upper secondary additional mathematics as well all right, to try out some of the, the curriculum and see whether how comfortable, how interested they are uh, on this subject. So that at the end of SEC 2, you know whether indeed they are interested in these subjects and whether they should uh, uh, put it up as one of their subject choices. All right. So, so this is something uh, for the express students to look forward to. And this is, I say again, unique to only Assumption English School. You do not find this in any other school at this point in time. I can confidently say because uh, we've been getting some uh, affirmation uh, from higher management in uh, Ministry of Education. In fact, right now when I was just attending the uh, meeting today, uh, it was mentioned again. All right, mentioned again by my boss to all the other principals. You see, Assumption English is doing this, you know. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Paul. Yeah. Uh, maybe the next question to uh, Ms. Vivian. Um, would do you have anything to add with regard to the support that the school has uh, provided you as as a parent? Uh, definitely, the school has really supported um, all the the students and yeah. The students, especially um, the principal, I, I find that he's really very humble, uh, very approachable, and he's always assuring us that um, the students there are good and the teachers there are caring. So that's why I joined the PSG just to, you know, to, to also to assure myself that um, she's good in school. Yeah. Yes. All right, can we have um, the next question? We have um, some parents asking about our collaboration with the Football Association of Singapore. They would like to know more about the um, selection process for the football CCA. Uh, Mr. Court, would you like to take that question? Yeah, uh, okay, I, I'm taking this question because my key personnel knows that I'm a football fan. <laughs> But, but actually, I'm a long-suffering fan, you know, because the, the team that I support uh, has been suffering for so long. Parents, I don't know whether you can make a guess on uh, which team do I support. Uh. If right now, you know, in this sharing session, if it's in my room, you'll be able to see there's a large poster of my favorite team. Uh, but over here, I'm in another school right now, so you can't see that. Okay, I'll share. Uh. I'm a football fan, uh, supporter of Arsenal. So you know how tam it is, right? Very sad. So anyway, uh, for Assumption English, yes, you are right. We have this collaboration with Football Association of Singapore. It was just recently announced. So we are one of the 10 schools uh, selected to be the School Football Academy. So in other words, you will get professional uh, football coaches coming to our school. In fact, it's not just one, it will be a team of uh, professional football coaches who will be uh, attached to us. Uh. And uh, with regards to the selection process, uh, right now we are thinking of having a selection trials, all right, uh, on the day of either the uh, SEC1 registration itself, it could be on that day itself, or it could be the next day, we are not too sure yet, or it could be after Christmas. After Christmas, maybe there's uh, less of a rush. Lah. Uh, and then second one, registration, because uh, it's going to be likely virtually done uh, online. Uh, sometimes parents also a lot of things to settle, so that may not be a very ideal day. And then, of course, the next day, 
uh, sometimes people still feel a bit rushed. But we, we, we are we have not confirmed yet because we need to liaise with Football Association of Singapore. But indeed, if you choose us uh, as the school, uh, you'll be notified, all right, of the uh, selection trials on which particular day. I just want to say that actually, right, even right now, uh, actually our football coach. Uh, is actually a national uh, under 15 under 16 national coach his name is philip out and actually this year during the s league season he has taken over the coaching of the uh, young lions actually so he's indeed a football coach but he's not the only one one of my teacher uh, is actually the assistant as well and he holds uh, i think a license a or license b uh, football coach as well so in terms of the whole ecosystem uh, we are very strong in terms of developing your child for football. So if let's say your interest, your child's interest is, is in football, and especially if you're a supporter of Arsenal, all right, Assumption English is the school to come. No, no, no. Just joking. If you're interested in football, Assumption English is the school to come to. Thank you, Mr. Kwok. Sorry, can, can I just add on the, about the football? Yes. Because that time, yes. I think they were invited. I think the school invited uh, Fandi Ahmad. Yes. Yeah, they, they, everyone yeah, yeah. was so excited about it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, even yeah. My, my daughter was like, wow, I think he's famous. I said, yes, he, he is famous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, most, most excited was the principal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's a great fan, eh? Yeah. Right, maybe we have a next question for uh, Miss Wong. Uh, are there any special programs in which a teacher will be able to stay back to help the students? Uh, well, okay. Um, generally, to help the students, we do not really need a program per se to help the students because every child is important. And from day one, we have been actually um, encouraging our students to be proactive with their own learning. And learning with some help in academic we shouldn't kind of like accumulate it until a formal session then i'll ask my teacher so daily should there be any doubt i believe my teachers in the class would have actually tried to uh, um, kind of clarify the misunderstanding or support them to close the learning gap and of course there are some students who needed uh, more personalized help in this case we do have students who will actually approach the teachers during their uh, recess time and after school that's a uh, kind of a co communications between the students as well as the subject teachers now on top of it like what um just now uh, mrs chong has mentioned she's our hod mathematics there's this booster program that uh, we have actually uh, put in place in school um, to help students in small group coaching and there's a designated uh, day of the week where the students will stay back, all right, and the teachers will provide additional uh, support and help. Okay, so rest assured, in terms of academic, we do support the students throughout the year. And in terms of like uh, social, emotional uh, well-being, should the students need help, someone to talk to, someone neutral, and giving them objectives, perspectives, then we have this walk-in uh, sessions with our school counsellors. They can actually make an appointment and then see the school counsellors, be it during the recess break or after school. All right. So then in terms of uh, physical fitness, um, sad to say these two years, COVID, we are unable to have like peer-led kind of training sessions. But uh, when things are better, all right, rest assured, your, your child will find ways, you know, to learn from the seniors. Uh, this is what's happening in AES. Thank you. Thank you. All right, uh, Miss Miss Vivian, uh, as a parent, uh, how do you know that your uh, the teachers in our school are supporting your child's learning? Would you like to share with uh, us? Yeah, um, actually, they I noticed that uh, per subject they will have a group chat. Yeah, so I noticed whatever when they have some questions or what they can just post it in the group chat. No problem. Even the, the teachers are there to help them. Mm. So, but of course, I will advise her I mean, if it's too late or what, you don't disturb the teacher. You know, they have a very uh, long day in school already. Yeah. Mm. So that, that's what I, I come to know about it. It's like 
or most of, or most of the subjects. Yeah. Okay, and uh, I think as a, as parents, right, from mm. uh, for uh, when you have children um, proceeding from sec uh, primary to secondary school, then many parents are also concerned with uh, longer hours. Okay, at the secondary school level. So, Miss Vivian, could you perhaps share with us on the times that um, usually your child gets home each day? Yeah, actually, during the transition is actually quite mm. tiring, especially okay. yes. Uh, especially during the, the set one. So I think this one, they really have to be um, their own personal attitude towards the, the, the change. Yeah. They also, because, uh, and also family support is important. Mm. So of course, you'll be very tired because it's quite long in, uh, in secondary school compared to primary school. Yeah. I guess this one is more for adapt to adapt on themselves, yeah, and to time manage. Hmm. Thank you. Um, hmm. We have a a question for Mr. Kwok. Um, our teacher in charge is around, but she's not able to come on the live screen. So there's a question on any requirement to join the judo girls team. Uh, yeah. So actually, uh, as mentioned earlier on, uh, judo is one of our DSA sports. Uh, but at the same time, although it's DSA, uh, in terms of judo at the primary school, uh, it is that I don't think there's any judo sports uh, in the primary school. So coming over to secondary, uh, what we'll do is, although there's a selection process, all right, but if let's say a child, all right, a, a, a girl, a female student is really very interested in judo, uh, normally, we will accede to the request, all right, because judo really they don't come in with any prior skills or, or knowledge. So, we start on a very even level playing field. So, this is one of those sports that we, we, we can develop and grow the child, all right. In any case, when you have competitions, you go by weight level as well. And I just want to say that uh, for the judo as a sport, the school have done very well, all right. Pre COVID, we came in uh, third actually at the national level for C division girls, eh? All right, not the boys team, but for the girls team. It goes to show that our girls eh, who are, can be quite violent if they want to, I'm just joking. Eh? Uh, it's very strong and very fit, all right? So if indeed there's a child who's very interested, uh, why not? You know, in fact, uh, one of my teacher in charge, uh, Miss Rain, uh, who's actually in this uh, whole setup as well, uh, she trains with the students also. Uh, a few times when I saw her coming out of training, I, I got a bit scared and intimidated by her actually. So actually, uh, no worries. If you are interested in judo, uh, chances is good because uh, they all start from a level playing field. But whatever it is, uh, the important thing is the interest and the attitude. Uh, all right, we're looking at that as well. Uh, it's not only just the DSA sports, but for all other activities as well. If, and if a child shows that sincerity, uh, that motivation to want to learn, uh, Assumption English is a school that will always give a child that chance. Uh, earlier on, when it was mentioned about our teachers being very caring, you know, I, I want to say that indeed this is true. Because every uh, MOE has got surveys uh, to be conducted at the, uh, for the school staff and so forth. Uh, I can't share much, but I can safely say this, our school uh, staff engagement, teacher engagement results uh, is among the highest among the highest uh, nationwide and i feel that my teachers uh, are very mission driven all right very mission driven they are here always to want to support uh, every child uh, that's why when i quoted our founding saint saint louis marie de montfort those whom the world rejects must move you the most that resonates with me that resonates with my teachers uh. so every child is important all right and we must be there for them so if that's something that we always remind uh, our teachers as well as, as our students because we want our students to be like that as well to be there to be supportive towards their peers their friends uh, especially towards those who are marginalized yeah thank you mr kwok uh, we have a question uh, sorry can i interrupt uh, mr yes. kwok a bit sorry i just want to ask um why is the floor ball is not uh, involved with girls I mean, in, in the school for three yeah. years already, but uh, I have this yeah. question, it's always in my mind. Why is yeah. it not open to the girls? Yeah, so so 
in a way, uh, uh, it's a bit historical as well. It's historical in a way that uh, actually the school a uh, couple of years ago, uh, when it was in Queensway Secondary, I think from 2013 to 2001 and 2015, all right, the student population actually dropped a lot, dropped a lot. Uh, and, and when I took over the school in 2018, uh, actually our school population uh, was about 500 plus. 500 plus. Uh. That time I, I call it a boutique school, uh, a boutique school, uh, uh, small and cozy. Uh, so because of the small numbers, uh, what we could offer as a CCA uh, uh, wasn't so possible to offer to, uh, so many varieties. Uh. In fact, uh, besides uh, uh, floorball uh, for girls, uh, uh, there were also one other UG uh, that had to close down because of the dwindling population. So right now, our population has been growing. Okay, Right now, at this point in time, we have grown uh, yeah, quite a bit. Uh, we are above 800 already. So actually, right now, in terms of our population size, uh, it's actually uh, very nice. So looking at it, next year, we should hit about 850 to 900. Not too large, not too small, just right. Now, in the event, there is a possibility of opening up a CCA, let's say, for four more girls, uh, yeah, why not? Nah? Yeah, uh, but currently, be great. at this point in time, uh, uh, maybe give us a bit of time, we will we will take a look. But girls do have a chance to try out other sports, nah? just like softball. Softball is mainly for girls, all right? And then uh, we have the dance as well, which is mainly for girls, although it's open to boys as well, but the boys all get scared, nah? because mostly girls, nah? all right? Used to have uh, two boys, uh, but oh, I think they got bullied away by the girls uh, so they all gave up so now it's basically an uh, all girls uh, dance uh, cca and they do very well as well mm. all right. thank you mr Kwok. Uh, maybe one one last question uh, for miss wong um parent asked me i know what are the chances to enter the express stream with an al of 22 <laughs> all right um well uh this is our first year implementing the AL uh, scoring system. So based on our trend results, uh, MOE has actually uh, proposed uh, the placement range score. So 22 happened to be the upper bound. So meanwhile, I think we are unsure, um, but to the parents here with an AL 22, if you place us as your first choice, um, there's a high tendency of joining us all right and like what i say is uncertain but do place us as your first choice okay yeah and we do yeah, hope to must see be... your boy or your child joining us <laughs> yeah it's got to be first choice uh, yeah mm -hmm. because uh, currently with the kind of uh, allocation system um your choice plays a major role in placing the school because when it comes to a tie or limited vacancies the choice will determine the chances. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Thank you very, very much to uh, Ms. Vivian, uh, to Mr. Kwok and Ms. Wong uh, for taking uh, many, many questions. Yeah. So uh, for the audience with us, do stay on to assess the feedback form link as well as the video sharing by our SEC ones this year. Our SEC ones are the first cohort of mixed form classes with the introduction of full SBB. So this is the um, QR code that you can scan and assess on your mobile devices. And shortly after, we will be showing the uh, videos by our set ones. You can also join us on AES MANA.
Don't worry, I'll help you to write your name. What we really love about our school library is the space. The tables, chairs, and air conditioning create the perfect environment for many of us to study in after school. Totally. Sometimes we even have lessons and consultation with teachers here. Wow, that's nice. It's so spacious, and there are even couches here. I look forward to studying here with my friends after school. Yup, there's a wide range of books of different genres in this library. Besides books, we have newspaper and magazines. Welcome to the ASC cabin. ASC stands for After School Engagement. Here, students can come and take a break from studying to play games and bond with each other. There are workshops conducted here from time to time for the students to learn new skills. Hey, there's Jason. Let's go see what. Welcome to our AES soccer field. Do you know, the under-15 national football team actually trains on this very field each week? Yes, because of our field, we have enjoyed many activities here as a school. Do you remember last year? We had water soccer and the Assumptionites challenge that ended off with the slide down the inflatable castle. Yeah, I had so much fun with my classmates splashing around. Remember when our teacher joined us in the Assumptionites challenge as well? Great bonding time with them too. And of course, besides the school activities, our soccer and softball CCA sessions are also conducted here. Also offer judo as a CCA. And we even have a special room called the dojo for the judokas to train in. A very warm welcome to the dojo. Our training may be tough, but that's what makes us judo cast orders more stronger. I appreciate how we would cheer one another up when some parts of the training seem difficult. That often gives me the motivation to continue pushing on. So let's take a look at how we train. Let's go, Chelsea! Let me show you another relaxing spot around school. He's in the counseling room. Hi, Mr. Chan. Oh, hello there. What are you up to? We're currently bringing our new friend around school. Oh, hi. If you, need, if you know someone who is going through a rough patch and you are sitting here, feel free to drop by my office. Mr. Chen is our school counselor. In AES, we have two school counselors, an allied educator for learning and behavioral support, and a student welfare officer. All of them are very approachable. We are really fortunate to have Mr. Chen in our school. Oh, you're welcome. And feel free to drop by if you want to. Sure, we will. We'll okay. catch up with you later. Sure. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. All right, to the audience who just join us, if you have any questions, you can still click on the question form link listed under the YouTube description. And do follow us on social media on AES MANA. Thank you so much for joining us today. Do set reminders to join in again tomorrow on YouTube. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs>